The holiday event 2023 is coming to Pokemon Sleep. Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video, it's Bro Vinny here. In this video we're going to cover all of the event changes and bonuses for the holiday 2023 double Dream Shard research event. As well as the 5 tips I have for you guys to prepare for this event. While it is officially known as holiday 2023, I may sometimes call it Christmas. This event, interestingly, runs between the 18th and 24th of December, which actually doesn't cover Christmas at all. So it got me thinking whether there's going to be another special event straight after this supposed holiday event. And if not, maybe there's going to be a New Year event after instead which would give us a one week break before the next event occurs. Tip number one, prepare your ice type Pokemon. So unlike previous events, in this event, which is going to be held only on Greengrass Isle, so you make sure you choose Greengrass Isle during this week, one of the three random berries on Greengrass Isle will be guaranteed to be the ice type berry. So where you can, or if you already have an invested ice type Pokemon, make sure you bring it along. However, if you don't already have a really good, say, Sfeel or a Glaceon, don't go rushing into investing in a mediocre one. Because in reality, Greengrass Isle is actually not that hard to raise the Snorlax strength and progress the Snorlax tiers. And you still have a chance to get some good berry types, with the two other random berries. On top of that, during this week, a bunch of ice type Pokemon will have increased spawn rates. So you might end up catching a good one during this week. And that includes Glaceon and Sfeel. Along with two other new supposedly ice type Pokemon. Now I can't say for sure that these two will be ice type. So this is Boma Snow's evolutionary line and Deli Bird. While they are ice types in the main series, they also have a secondary type, Deli Bird being secondarily flying and Aboma Snow being secondarily grass. But I do think that they will be ice type Pokemon in this game because ice types are generally lacking. And if you ask me, I suspect that the Aboma Snow should be an ingredient specialist and Deli Bird possibly a skill specialist. And we will also get a special Pikachu with a red hat with a high chance of appearing during this week. This Pikachu once again, like the Witch Hat Pikachu, cannot evolve. So I suspect that the stats will be similar to the Witch Hat Pikachu being a little bit faster than a regular Pikachu. With the main downside being it cannot evolve so it will still be worse than a Raichu. Tip number two and this is more for beginners. Check your area bonus for Green Grass Isle. I would say if you haven't already got your Green Grass Isle area bonus to above 25-30%, try and get to about that level before the actual holiday event starts. That way you'll progress the Snorlax tiers quicker during this week. But don't go overdoing it because you might be capped based on how many sleep styles you've unlocked. If you've unlocked 190 sleep styles, then you can reach the maximum that is 50% area bonus cap. So steer clear of these maximums dependent on how many sleep styles you've unlocked. Tip number three, save some biscuits for this holiday week because you might get some good spawns. Particularly the game does note or the news does note that you may be able to encounter a shiny Pokemon. Now once again the wording is ambiguous but we confirmed during the Eevee event week that this wording does mean that there is an increased shiny chance for specific Pokemon. It just doesn't clarify which Pokemon will have an increased shiny chance but my suspicion is it's gonna be Sfeel. And the reason? Well we only recently had an EV event, so it'd be very strange for a Glaceon to get another boost at shiny rate. As for the rest of the other Pokemon, well they're new. So new Pokemon generally debut without like an increased shiny rate. 
based on my experiences with other Pokemon games. And it's a pretty standard strategy so that the game leaves it open for another event to boost their shiny rate. Tip number four, now we're onto the more advanced stuff. There's going to be a new feature in this game, but only for a limited time, I'm guessing only for that week, where you can toggle this feature called Candy Boost. Now, based on the wording in the developer update, you'll be able to use one candy as though it were two, but at the cost of six times the usual amount of Dream Shards. And that sounds like a lot. So, let's do some maths. But before we start doing that, the main question is whether you're willing to convert your Dream Shards to candies, because this is essentially what this feature is doing. It's converting your excess Dream Shards into candies that you might need. And the key word here is the candies that you need. So I'm not talking about things like Eagly Buff, or Totodile, or Gulpin, anything that you usually have a lot of candies for, you shouldn't be using this feature. Because you're using a huge amount of Dream Shards in order to convert it into one candy, so it really should be reserved for Pokemon where you can't normally get a lot of candies for, or where you usually would have to use handy candies. For example, Ditto or Absol, because these candies are very rare to come by. So it might be worth you exchanging your Dream Shards. Now, assuming that you do actually have a good Ditto or Absol that you want to invest in, there is actually a time where it's better to invest using this Candy Boost, and then there's a bad time to use it. As it turns out, the amount of Dream Shards that is needed per candy used, so up here in this yellow uh, column here, increases, generally increases with the level of the Pokemon. So while each candy still generally provides only 25 EXP per candy, the Dream Shard cost is not the same. In fact, the earlier in the level you use this candy boost, the less is going to cost you in terms of that extra four times Dream Shard cost. And the reason why I say four times the Dream Shard cost is because normally you would still have to spend two times the Dream Shards if you were to use two candies. So six minus two times is four times. So let's say I was to use one candy to uh, level up an Absol at level 10, the Dream Shard cost will be 300 because it's 6 times 50. Whereas if I use one candy when Absol is level 49, each candy costs 295 Dream Shard, so 6 times 295 is 1,770 Dream Shards. That is per candy used. In other words, if you're going to use this feature, this new limited time feature, don't use it at the late levels because it's gonna cost you a lot of Dream Shards. Where you can, you should be focusing it, using it at uh, lower levels. And if you find that you are still running uh, low on Dream Shards, don't forget that there are dream clusters that you can open, but use these sparingly because as a reminder, the higher your rank, the more dream shards per cluster that you open. In other words, don't open these dream clusters until you actually need them. Thankfully, there are other ways to get more dream shards during this week. In fact, it's in the title of this event. Double Dream Shard Research. Tip number four, save your luck incenses for this week and use it during the later parts of the week. If you don't have a lot of luck incenses, use it when your drowsy power is highest. So maybe towards the last three or four days. If you have enough luck incenses, use it every day. In that way, you will get four times the amount of Dream Shards from your sleep research. And if you really want to push the limits, don't forget that you can add a Dream Shard bonus Pokemon 
to really reap the benefits of the 4 times multiplier. And even better is if you run a good camp ticket, and any Pokemon incenses you might be holding on to, giving you a maximum of 10 spawns every day, meaning more dream shards every day. And now on to tip number 5, the final tip for today. Now the information on this is still currently very limited, but the developers have said two things about Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon. One is there, it sound, it's sounding like they're going to get a good buff. So Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon are these Pokemon that have this skill, which upon triggering drops a certain amount of Dream Shards. There are two types, one is where there is a range of Dream Shards that can be dropped, and Gulpin is an example of this, and then there's Riolu, which drops a set amount of Dream Shards every time. The developers have said that they're going to rebalance Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon in order to increase, significantly increase their effect, and this update will be implemented just before the event starts. But additionally, specifically for Pokemon that have Dream Shard Magnet S, they will be twice as effective. Now, I'm not sure if that means they'll trigger the Dream Shard main skill twice as fast, or whether they'll drop two times the amount. But it does sound like it is worth looking through your box now to see if there's any Dream Shard Pokemon that are worth investing in but I wouldn't recommend investing in just yet because we don't know how much of a buff it will be and whether that's actually going to offset how much Dream Shards you're going to need when you do invest in a good one. For example, I raised this Gulpin from a low level, it was for research purposes, but let's say I were to, I were to drop all of my Dream Shards and candies onto this Gulpin it's going to cost me another 10, 13 grand of Dream Shards in order to have it at level 25, which isn't even that good. Because the average level of my team Pokemon, uh, my main team Pokemon, are level 35 to 40. So to consider the cost of actually investing in a good Dream Shard Pokemon, on top of the fact that I have to swap out one team member that could be really good, in order to fit this guy in, thereby actually reducing my overall Snorlax strength and drowsy power, and possibly meaning that my, my research Dream Shard bonus is reduced as well, I'm not really seeing the value of running a Dream Shard Pokemon, unless they buff this a lot. So while at some point I probably will need one or two Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon, I'm still not convinced that it is now, even with this event. So long as you invest carefully and not spread out your investment over every Pokemon in your box, you should still have sufficient Dream Shards and Dream Clusters to build your team for each area. And just to give you a reference, after almost playing the game for half a year now, uh, the only Pokemon that I've truly invested in uh, these four, these three, this one, uh, I invested a little bit in Bonsley, and these guys, and this one, and this one. The Gulpin investment was just for research, and that's it. Now at this point you might ask me, which of the Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon is the best, because there's actually a few of them. So I would recommend that you use the Raynaunt's calculator, uh, and go under Pokedex and select for the main skill Dream Shard Magnet S and you will see that there are two because one of them is the variable Dream Shard Magnet S and the other one is the regular, so the set number uh, Dream Shard Magnet S. So pick one of them first and you will see a few Pokemon pop up uh, and these are the Dream Shard Skill Specialists Lucario and Meowth lines then you want to display their skill trigger value so you click the plus button and click on skill trigger value and also sort them by skill trigger value and you'll see that the skill the highest skill trigger value is lucario in this list 
And we also need to go over to the other Dream Shard Magnet, so this one here. And again, scroll down, just make sure you've got Skill Trigger Value selected here, and then Sorted here. And you'll see that out of the other set of Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon, so this is the variable type Dream Shard Magnets, uh, Swalot has the highest Skill Trigger Value. Now I have confirmed with Raynan that you cannot compare across different main skills. So you can't take this uh, skill trigger value and compare it to the skill trigger value of the other similarly named main skill. So while we can't comp compare and see whether Swallow is better or whether Lucario is better, we do know that in terms of the skill trigger, these two are the best in their categories. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into defining how good a Pokemon is. For example, Sableye can drop mushrooms, whilst Lucario drops potatoes. And then we have Swallop, who also drops mushrooms, but less compared to Sableye. So which Dream Shard Magnet Pokemon is best for your team is a balancing question of what you have and what you need. Now I'm pretty sure that the last two tips confused the crap out of everyone, so if you have any questions, come over to our Discord and ask us there. Or use my comments section down below and let me know what you're still confused about. Hopefully this video helped you guys, if it did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Oh and I forgot to mention that you also get 1225 bonus sleep points for this event. But you can only get it if you sleep on the 24th of December, which is the last day of the event. Why 12.25? Well, because it's Christmas. Along with a bunch of Pikachu candies you can get from doing missions.